so many things that we need to pray for. So many things that we need to pray for. While you're getting your mind on prayer, uh, David Taylor is going to come and uh, express to us uh, this, this moment that we're about to witness this morning. And after he's done, I'll come back and we'll move into our period of altar prayer. All right, so he's going to share uh, what we're going to witness this morning. And after that, we're going to surround this altar and call out to the Lord for ourselves. Uh, is there anybody other than me that needs the Lord to do something for me? I know we, we come to pray for everybody else and we should, but, but every now and then, Lord, I need you to hear my cry. I, am I by myself every once in a while? Father, it's not my mother or my sister. But it's me, oh Lord, that's standing in the need of prayer. All right, so, so let's, let's give our attention uh, to the man of God as he shares with us this morning. Bless your name, God. Bless your name. There's no God like God. Because there's no God but God. He is such a good God. We have a special event today in regards to baptism. Our niece, Kesey, Sanders. Yeah. She's yeah. 34 years old. Yeah. All right. And she's been dealing with infirmity in her body. Yeah. A year and a half ago, she had open heart surgery. Yeah. She's been diagnosed with cancer. Dealing with myopathy throughout her body. So she's been going through. We'll get a headache or a stomach ache and we complain about that. And when I hear her story, it breaks my heart that she has to go through what she's going through. But our God is faithful. God knows exactly where she is. Yes. 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 She texts, she texts Carissa on Monday and asking Uncle Dave to baptize me. And when she, Carissa told me, I said, call her back. And I got on the phone. And I explained to what baptism was. It's on the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ. This identifies to the world that I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I asked her, have you done that? Have you done that? She said, I have done that. I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior.
And I told her this morning that she can't quit. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to cry. It's okay to get frustrated. But it's not okay to quit. Because God got you. And he brought you to it in order to carry you through it. Church, we gotta pray. We gotta pray. We gotta pray. Not only for Casey, but for the Bedford family. For yesterday, the family that said goodbye to, to Sister Sister Lad. Y'all, the ambulance wheels still roll in the hospital. Rooms are still full. Every other time we need to pray, it's now. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's, let's, let's feel this altar. Let's feel this altar this morning as they prepare for the baptism. Let's feel this altar. Uh, it's altar prayer time. It's altar prayer time. We're praying for the Benford family. For those that do not know, Sister Benford has transitioned and is in the arms of the Lord today. And as a show of great faith and strength, this family stands this morning in church, two days removed uh, from an event that they, they'll never forget. I give God praise because the Lord has made his people steadfast, unmovable, always abounding unto the works of the Lord. We give God praise. Let's, let's make our way to the altar as Minister Donald Taylor prepares to lead us in our altar prayer. Let's make our way. Let's make our way to the altar. My father is here. We've been praying and lifting him up. We know that God is a way maker, a miracle worker. We know that God can turn any situation around. I just need you to look at your neighbor and say, hold out by faith.
God, we come this morning with so many concerns, oh God, so many needs, so many things that we admit this morning that we are unable to fix. But God, I've been informed that you are fixed. Yes, sir.
those family members that are here and want to get a closer look, you can come into the choir stand. Um, those family members, friends that want to come and take a look, uh, you can take the choir stand. And that way you can have an opportunity to witness what the Lord is about to do. I 
for your number of songs, for your number of songs. We are continuing our series of lessons on the gratefulness. Fortieth number of songs. Fortieth number of songs. If you have it, say I got it. If you're still looking, say wait for me. If you're not intending on finding it, say go on. All right, I'm reading from the New American Standard. No matter what version you read, it should sound like this. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of the destruction, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon the rock, making my footsteps firm. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Watch this. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. Grants with us flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Do me a favor, find a neighbor. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Oh neighbor. Oh, neighbor. With your help, With your help. And, your and your prayers. The preacher's going to preach about praise, praise from the pit. From the pit. You may be seated. in a small town of Midland, Texas. Uh, a single 18-month-old baby girl garrisoned the attention of a whole nation. Uh, she was at her aunt's house in Midland and 18-month-old Jessica McClure fell into a whale and was 22 feet below the earth's surface. Uh, she, she was beneath the earth's surface and media swarmed Midland and we began, even though we did not know her, referring to her as baby Jessica. Uh, the situation was desperate to the point that uh, they had to dig and get baby Jessica, but because of where she was located and the narrowness of the well, a grown man was not able to go down 22 feet. They had to dig an adjacent hole. They had to dig down uh, on the side of Jessica. And then when they got close enough to her, they could dig across so that they would be able to access where baby Jessica was. I, I like that because it took them, watch this, not only 56 hours before they could reach her. That, that means for 56 hours, she's in a dark place. For 66 hours, she's in a place where she can no longer hear a human voice. For, for 60, 56 hours, she, she has no food or no water or no substance. I'm, I'm trying to get some people to connect with the fact that sometimes the pits that we are in, God doesn't deliver us instantly. Sometimes you got to hang out in the pit. And, and I'm surrounded by some people that can testify sometimes, Lord, I don't just ask why me, but I ask how long, Lord. I, I've been dealing with this pit for a long time, but can I tell you, sometimes it's because the Lord wants to know if you're going to learn how to praise Him in the pit, or if you're going to wait until the Lord bring you out. Is there anybody here that got to praise so deep that you can praise God while you're going through? You, you can be depressed Still, praise God. You can be sick and still lift up holy hand. I don't just praise them when it's well, but I got to praise even when I'm in the pit. So, so they, they, dig, they dig down 22 
two feet and get to baby Jessica that has been uh, mangled uh, in a well for 56 hours. They said, uh, woman of God, when they found her, that, that the well was so tight that one of her legs was actually behind her head uh, and they weren't able to see baby Jessica, but somebody got close enough that was digging and heard a voice. He called back to the top and said, we found her. Uh, I can't see her, but I can hear her. Uh, they asked the question, uh, David Taylor, Donald Taylor, uh, is she crying? They said, no, she's singing Winnie the Pooh. I wish I had a witness here that, that baby Jessica could be in a well that was 22 feet beneath the earth's surface for 56 hours and she wasn't complaining and crying about being in the pit. She was singing Winnie the Pooh. I wish I had a singing saint in the house this morning that in the middle of your trial could say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do Lord, I know I'm in a pit, uh, but in a mess, I'm in a whole mood. I'm able to lift up the name of Jesus even in a pit. In, in, this, in this passage, David uh, is talking about a moment where he is submerged in a pit situation. Uh, I, I love it when when the Bible does not give us clear instructions about what this pit actually was. There are some theologians that say this pit was when he was running from uh, the jealous javelin of Saul. When, when he was running from the same person that he had been trying to help. There are others that say this psalm was written when he was fleeing from Absalom, his only son, who had tried to overthrow him and to take his kingdom. I, I like it y'all when the word does not tell us what the occasion is because then it gives me an opportunity to write my name in and I just want to ask you uh, do you have any pits in your life? Are there any things that you're dealing with that got you so far that you can't even see the crack of light? That you're in a pit this morning and it seems like you're going through it all by yourself or uh, you're in a pit and you can't even see out of it. You can't even and see how the Lord is going to deliver you up the road. I just tell your neighbor, you're in a pit situation, but what you're going to learn this morning is that I got enough God in me that I can praise God even while I'm in a pit. That even though you can't see me, and even though you can't hear me, that you know I'm in the pit giving God praise. David helps us uh, by reminding us that even in this pit, he's giving God praise. Uh, uh, watch this, y'all. First of all, I need us to understand that even in the pit, there was, tell your neighbor, an expectation. The Bible says, I waited patiently uh, on the Lord. Now, you do know that the Bible was not written in English. It was translated into our language. But in the original Hebrew text, uh, the word patiently and waiting is actually uh, one word because it was translated into English it had to be two words. Now, what I'm trying to get you to understand is though the Bible says patiently waiting, patiently waiting is actually the same thing. What David said is so that you had an indication of how long he was in there. Uh, it literally reads waiting, I waited, which means I waited and then I waited some more. Oh, oh, some of y'all act like you know David's testimony that while in the midst of all that you are going through, it seemed like I'm waiting and then I'm waiting some more. I asked God to move on the behalf of my children, but it didn't happen overnight. Therefore, I'm waiting and I'm waiting some more. I asked the Lord to move in my finances, but I'm still only a dime above starvation. But I'm praising the Lord anyway because I'm waiting and waiting. Maybe I'm not the only one that didn't have to pray one time, but you found yourself praying over and over again. Again, but while I'm praying, I'm waiting and waiting. He 
says, wait it. I wait it. I, I like that, uh, Minister Taylor, because uh, that word in the Greek, wow, it points out uh, the fact that he is diligently waiting. The word picture for patience is actually a cord that is twisted together. Because literally, y'all, when I'm waiting for something, I have to be connected to that which I'm waiting for. Life is trying to pull me apart, but because I'm waiting on God, I got to remain connected to God. Now, that's why I can't be worried about you and how you going to throw in the towel and how you want to quit and how you don't see it. You ain't going to see it. I got to hold on by faith because at the appointed time, God will deliver. I said, waited. Brother Blaine, I waited. I, I waited patiently on the Lord. I, I think that the reason most of us don't get our answer is we miss this point in the psalm. He said, he inclined to me and he heard my cry. I needed some help with this. I walked into a nursery that were about 12 children. And when I walked in, uh, I could see that all of the children were crying. The, the nurse's aide was not in the nursery. She was on the outside and all of the kids uh, were crying. They were all crying. But then one of them started crying louder than the rest. One of them started crying so loud that uh, the attendant on the outside peeked in so that she could find out who it was uh, that was crying out. I said, Lord, let me examine this. What are you trying to say to me? I I'm saying as long as they were in the room crying to each other, uh, they were crying out. To cry out means uh, that I'm crying to those that are around me. Uh, what I discovered is if you really want God to move, you got to learn how to cry up. That you ain't crying out so that the people around you can see you. I'm crying up so that God can see me. Maybe that's why uh, the Bible says I will look toward the hills from which cometh my help. For my help comes from the Lord. Is there anybody here that has learned how to cry up? You don't care if your neighbor hear you. You don't care if nobody around you hear you. But when I need the Lord, I learn how to say, Lord, if you don't show up, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, There is an expectation. Notice, notice, Sister Harris, that the Bible says he cried out to the Lord. He, he didn't waste time crying out to the people that were around him that got problems they self. Uh, he cried out to the Lord. Some of y'all looking at me strange, but somebody called you with a problem and you denied the call just this week because you got problems of your own. Every now and then you got to learn how to call on God for yourself. Every now and then you got to stop looking and everybody around you and begin to say, Lord, for you I live and for you I die. I'm calling on the name of the Lord. In expectation, he called on the Lord. Watch this. And the Lord inclined to him. Uh, I wish I had time to tell you that literally means that the Lord leaned in his direction. Is there anybody here that ever been sick and you couldn't get well and the Lord just leaned in your direction and all of a sudden you started to feel good even though your symptoms didn't change. Is there anybody here that ever been in a financial crisis and the Lord didn't bring you all the way out but he allowed you a little bit of success because he's leaning in your direction. Uh, somebody ought to be feeling better this morning that despite the hell that I'm going through. I'm waiting on the Lord uh, because the Lord is leaning. There, there, there was there was an expectation. But can I tell you part of the reason that many of us don't get an answer to our prayers that we don't realize there was also an expiration. 
there was also an expiration. The Bible says he's in a pit and uh, the Bible says the pit is outlined by miry clay. That, that there is a pit but the pit uh, is difficult to get out of because it's mud all around the pit. So the more I try to dig myself out, uh, the deeper I get in the hole. I thought I'd have more help than that. Some of us are in the pit that we're in not because somebody dropped us in a pit uh, but because we were trying to get ourselves out. We were trying to prove to other people that don't like us and that we don't even like ourselves how good we are and we found ourselves uh, in a pit. We've been trying to keep up with the Joneses. Now I done bought a car from a dealer that I don't even like trying to impress people that don't like me and I found myself uh, am I the only one that didn't land in this pit that I'm in because of anything God done. I put myself in the pit but the Bible says he came to an expiration. Let me help you. Maybe if you let God pull you out, you'll stop falling over and over again. He came to an expiration. Watch this. Watch the language of the text. He, he comes to an expiration. Here's what happens uh, Sister Tara, when he stops struggling, watch this first of all, your independence has got to expire some of y'all are just so independent. You don't need nobody. You, 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 you must have skipped over Genesis chapter 1. Even God looked at man and said, man uh, should not be alone. Let me make for him a suitable help me. But you and your self-sufficient self, you don't need nobody. You don't need nobody to tell you nothing. You don't need nobody to give you no instructions. If you fall in a hole, you're going to dig yourself out. And that's why 10 years later, you just further in the hole than you were when you started. Your independence has got to come to an expiration. You got to get to the point where you say, Lord, I need your help. Watch this. Watch this. His independence expired, but watch this. His inactivity expired. No, the Bible says he brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, set my feet upon a rock making my footsteps firm. Wait a minute. Something has happened in the text, Sister Lewis. When it started out, he was in the pit and he couldn't move. But the moment that God inclined to him, now the Bible says that he's given his feet strength, which means, watch this, he's literally walking around in the pit. I, I need somebody to help me today. That every now and then, God won't lift you out of what you're in, but he'll give you strength to walk around in it. He'll give you strength where you can get comfortable in that thing and say, even though I'm not in an ideal place, I'm glad that even though I'm sick, I can still give him praise. Even though I'm broke, I can still lift him up. Is there anybody here that can praise him in the pit? I'm going to my seat. Uh, there should be an expiration. The Bible says he he brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, watch this, and set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. I used to be falling all over the place, but the only reason I'm standing now is because I'm standing on a rock. There's somebody here that was standing on a person, and when that person fell, uh, you fell. But, but there's somebody else in this building that can say the only reason I'm standing is because I'm standing on a rock. The only reason I haven't slipped and fell ain't because I'm so good, it ain't because I'm such a Christian, but it's because I'm standing on the rock. The only reason I haven't had a nervous breakdown and pulled the rest of my hair out is because I'm standing on the rock. Uh, the only reason I didn't give up and throw in the towel uh, is because I'm standing on the rock. Is there anybody other than me that can testify of the reason I am where I am is because I'm standing on a rock. I'm going to my seat. 
there's an expectation. There's an expiration. But then, there's an inspiration. Some people get inspired when they watch what God does for you. I, I got something in my mind. Can you help me get it out? But the Bible says that David is waiting. But if I could draw your attention back to my opening story. When baby Jessica was in that way. The Bible says her rescuers. That while she was in the way. If they wasn't sitting on their hands. The Bible says, watch this, that they were, David was in a, in a, in a pit with miry clay. Yeah. Now watch this, while baby Jessica was in the way, yeah. the workers were digging to get to baby Jessica. Yeah. In hour one, they were digging. Yeah. In hour two, they were digging. Yeah. In hour 20, they were digging. Yeah. In hour 40, they were digging. In hour 50, they were digging. What am I saying, preacher? That while David was waiting, I believe God was working. I need to encourage somebody that like they were digging for baby Jesse. God is working it out for you. He's working out your finances. He's working out your health. He's working out your relationship. Hold on in the pit. While you're waiting, God is working. But can I show you one more thing? The Bible says that many will see you and fear God and trust in the Lord. What that tells me is there's one more point to my little old Easter speech. David was waiting. God was working. And while David was waiting, and God was working. People started worshiping. Is there anybody here that can give God praise for what God done in the life of somebody else? If it healed somebody else, can you give God praise? If it lifted somebody else, can you give God praise? I'm going to my seat, but this verse is actually a dual verse. It's not just talking about David in a pit, but it's talking about Jesus in a pit. That one day that Jesus went to Golgotha, they buried him in a bottle tomb that was like a pit. I'm trying to tell somebody that before Jesus got on the cross, he cried out. Do y'all remember in the Garden of Gethsemane on the way to Golgotha? He said, Lord, if it be your blessed will, remove from me this bitter cup, but nevertheless, thy will be done. And then on Calvary, the fourth word of Jesus on his way to the grave. Is Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? But how many know that God didn't leave him? For when it was over, Jesus said himself, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Is there anybody here that made up their mind? I got to turn it over to Jesus. I can't carry it no more. Another step. I need God's help. I'm in a pit right now. But while in my pit, I'm waiting. God is working. And people are worshiping. Is there anybody here that can help me close this message? How many know that God heard Jesus cry and heard? Up, up out of my sickness, up out of depression, up 
yourself in some low situations and it's good to know that when nobody else could reach David that God reached him right where he was I, I wish I wish I had time I wish I had time to tell you that that in order for them to rescue baby Jessica, the workers could not drop a line that wouldn't do. They literally got in the well and grabbed her and pulled her to safety. Why, why, why am I excited about that? When you are in a pit and nobody else can get to you, the Bible says he inclined to you, which means God will get in the pit and pull you out of the muck and the mire. That's your testimony that, that God didn't wait till you got out of it. You didn't get yourself together. God got in your pit. God got in that addiction, in that illness, in that depression. And he pulled you to safety. Can we give God praise and we can praise God even in the midst of life's peace. If you're here today and this first call is for salvation. If you're here today and you, you don't know whether you're saved or not. You have not expressed uh, a saving faith in God. Uh, it's as simple as what the Bible says. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And that God has raised him from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. Uh, we've taken and we've added all kind of rules and stipulations to salvation. But all it takes is a heart belief and a mouth confession. And God is able to save. So if that's you. And you're in this house today. And you came for no other reason but to be saved. You want an introduction to this Jesus. That we're excited about. We want you to come. In this moment, our hearts and our prayers are open to you. Will you come? Will you come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, there may be one. Lord from your Christianity and you need to reconnect with him can we pray the prayer of reconnection with you if you're saved you're sanctified you're filled with the Holy Ghost but you backslidden you need to get back on track with God if that's your prayer today would you come we just want to pray the prayer of rededication with you hallelujah I see you sister Those that are at the altar. 
lift up your hands towards heaven. Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for this moment, Father, and pray now, Father. First of all, we acknowledge the fact that we've fallen short. For the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Father, somewhere along the line, Father, we've, we've become distracted and disconnected from you. And Father, we're standing here today, Father, because uh, we want nothing between us, Father. We, we want to have an intimate relationship with you. Father, we want our relationship would be to the point that when you speak, we're able to hear. So, Father, we pray now, God, that as we draw near unto you, that you'll draw near unto us, Father. Allow the Holy Spirit to revive so richly on the inside of us, Father, that we can literally hear him speaking as if he was talking audibly. Father, we pray now, God, that you would allow us to feel your presence again, God. Father, that we don't want our life to be a life of sadness and sickness, but that we want our life to be a life of joy, Father. I'm praying you reconnect this saint back to you right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, when you reconnect her, Father, we pray that you would release all of the bountiful blessings that you have in store for her. The Bible says, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men the things God has prepared for them that love him. Father, we pray that you would open every door in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's stand all over the building. We're ready. We're ready. Just before, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Y'all take your seats real, real quick. I forgot. We, we got one thing that we, we definitely want to do before we dismiss. Uh, one of the privileges of baptism is communion. Once those exit, let's let's close the door. At this point, no walking. Let's, let's honor what God is about to do. taken some bread and given thanks he broke it and he gave it to them saying this is my body which is given to you this do in remembrance of me and in the same way he took the cup after he had eaten saying this cup is the new testament of my blood but behold the hand of the one who betrays me is at the table. Father, we thank you for this blessed opportunity to bring another saint into the fold. Father, we thank you for her life and legacy. We thank you for how you're moving through her. Thank you that we had an opportunity to witness, Father, her giving her life to you. Now, Father, we pray that you would surround her with your love and allow her to experience you in a brand new way. We give your name praise. We bless now these sacraments as the broken body and shed blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says, is she ready? after he had given thanks, he said, take the bread, break it, and eat it. You may eat. 
And after the same manner also after he himself, he said, take this cup, which is the New Testament of my blood, you may drink. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Minister David to present her with a certificate and give us our benediction. This certificate of baptism certifies that Key C.D. Ann Sanders was baptized on Wednesday, September, uh, November 17, 2024, at St. Miles Missionary Baptist Church in Eastern Texas, under the leadership of Pastor Brian Omar Sr., Senior Pastor. Children of God said, Amen. Amen. 